Growing up in a rural area meant life was pretty straightforward for me and my older brother, Jack. We were the kind of family that stuck together through thick and thin, a principle drilled into us by our parents from the get-go. Our home wasn't much to look at, a modest farmhouse with peeling paint and creaky floorboards, but it was filled with love and laughter, making it a sanctuary for both of us. Our dad was a man of few words, preferring to let his actions speak for him. He worked the fields from dawn till dusk, his hands as rough as the soil he tended to. Mom, on the other hand, was the heart of our home. Her laughter was infectious, and she had a way of making even the simplest meals taste like gourmet feasts. Jack was always the competitive one, always aiming to be first, whether it was reaching the dinner table or finishing chores. Beaky again, sis, he'd boast, a wide grin plastered on his face, his eyes twinkling with mischief. Only cause you cheat. I'd retort, my hands on my hips, trying to look annoyed, but failing miserably. We'd bicker back and forth, but it was all in good fun. School was a mixed bag for us. I loved the learning, soaking up knowledge like a sponge, while Jack, well, Jack was more interested in anything that didn't involve sitting still for too long. It was during these formative years that I realized I wanted something different for myself. I loved our home, but I yearned to see what was beyond the fields and fences that made up our world. College was my ticket out, a chance to explore and grow. When the acceptance letter arrived, it was a moment of mixed emotions. Mom was over the moon, proud as could be, while Dad gave me one of his rare smiles, his eyes saying what his mouth couldn't. Jack, though, was harder to read. You sure about this, Sarah? He asked one evening as we sat on the porch, watching the sun dip below the horizon. His voice was gruff, the words heavy with unspoken concern. Yeah, I am, I replied, my voice steady, but my heart racing. I just, I need to see what's out there, you know? Jack nodded, the silence stretching between us. Just don't forget where you come from, all right? These fields, this house, it's part of who you are. I won't, I promise, I assured him, the weight of his words settling on my shoulders. It was a promise I intended to keep, no matter how far I roamed. College was a blur of studies and newfound freedoms, a stark contrast to the life I had left behind. Upon graduation, the thought of returning to that simple, rural life was overshadowed by the opportunities that lay in the city. I took a job and settled into my grandmother's house, a cozy little place that felt like a piece of home in the midst of urban chaos. The Harrisons, an elderly couple with hearts as wide as the fields back home, lived beside my grandmother's house, which I now called my own. Their granddaughter, Lily, lived with them, a city girl through and through, her world seemingly a universe apart from mine. Jack and Lily's whirlwind romance caught us all off guard, especially me. I wanted to be happy for them, really, I did. But Lily and I, well, we mixed like oil and water from the get-go. One evening, during a family dinner I hosted at my grandmother's house, the tension reached a boiling point. I had spent hours preparing the meal, eager to bring a piece of home to the city. The table was set, the food laid out, a feast by any standard, or so I thought. What is this? Lily asked, eyeing the spread with a mix of curiosity and disdain. It's dinner, I said, trying to keep the annoyance out of my voice. Mom's recipes. Thought it'd be nice to have a taste of home. Jack dug in, praising the flavors, but Lily pushed her food around her plate, barely taking a bite. It's quaint, she finally said, her tone implying anything but. I clenched my jaw, feeling my temper rise. Quaint? I echoed, my voice sharper than I intended. It's home cooking. Real food, not some overpriced dish from a fancy restaurant. Jack shot me a look, a silent plea to keep the peace, but I was past caring. What's wrong, Lily? Not to your taste? Lily set her fork down, her lips a thin line. I just prefer food with a more, refined palate, she said, each word dripping with condescension. The meal ended in awkward silence, the unspoken words hanging heavy between us. It was clear Lily and I were from two different worlds, and neither of us was willing to bridge that gap. 
Life had a way of throwing curveballs, but nothing could have prepared me for the news that shattered the ordinary flow of my days. Mr. Harrison, Lily's grandfather, had been involved in a serious car accident. I remember standing in my kitchen when Jack called. The moment I heard his voice, thick with emotion, I knew something was terribly wrong. Sarah, it's Mr. Harrison, he's, he didn't make it, Jack said in a strangled voice. My heart sank, and for a moment, I couldn't speak. Mr. Harrison had been like a second grandfather to me, always there with a story or a joke, his eyes twinkling with mirth. We need to be there for Mrs. Harrison. She's, she's all alone now. I finally said, my voice, barely above a whisper. Yeah, I know. The funeral's tomorrow. Can you believe it? Just like that, he's gone. Jack replied, the pain in his voice mirroring my own. The day of the funeral was a blur, a procession of faces and condolences that seemed to blend together in a haze of grief. The Harrison's home, usually a beacon of warmth and laughter, felt cold and empty, the air heavy with loss. Mrs. Harrison, the rock of her family, looked small and fragile, her eyes lost in sorrow. But what struck me was the undercurrent of conversation that had nothing to do with mourning or loss. I heard he left everything to her, whispered one distant relative to another, not even bothering to lower their voice enough. Yeah, but what's going to happen now? Who's going to take care of everything? Came the reply, laced with greed rather than concern. The audacity of such talk, at such a time, made my blood boil. Was there no respect for the man who had just passed? For the woman who had lost her partner of so many years? It was then that Lily found me, her expression one of irritation rather than sorrow. Sarah, what are you even doing here? You're not family. Maybe it's time you left, she said, her words sharp and unwelcome. I looked at her, incredulous. I'm here to support Mrs. Harrison, just like everyone else. Or at least, that's what I thought we were all here for. I shot back, my patience wearing thin. Lily scoffed, rolling her eyes. Please, like you being here makes any difference. Just go home, Sarah. With a heavy heart, I decided to leave, not wanting to cause a scene. But as I walked away, the snippets of conversation about assets and inheritance continued to echo in my ears, a stark reminder of the greed that often lurked just beneath the surface of familial bonds. The day after the funeral, my phone rang, slicing through the silence of my home. The screen displayed Mrs. Harrison's number, and I answered immediately, my voice thick with concern. Sarah, dear, could you come over? I, I need to talk to someone. Mrs. Harrison's voice trembled through the line, her usual strength buried under layers of grief and fatigue. Of course, Mrs. Harrison. I'll be right there, I replied, my heart aching for the woman who had suddenly found herself alone in the world. Arriving at her doorstep, I was greeted by a sight that tugged at my heartstrings. Mrs. Harrison stood there, a shadow of her former self, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. Without a word, she ushered me inside, into the living room where so many of our neighborhood's memories had been made. Thank you for coming, Sarah. It seems you're one of the few who truly cares, she began, her voice laced with a sorrow that resonated deep within me. It's what neighbors are for, Mrs. Harrison. How are you holding up? I asked, though the question felt inadequate against the magnitude of her loss. She sighed, a long, weary exhalation that seemed to carry the weight of the world. As well as can be expected, I suppose. But it's not just the loneliness, Sarah. It's, it's everything else. The vulture circling, if you know what I mean. I nodded, understanding all too well the ugly side of human nature that tragedy often revealed. I've heard some talk. I admitted, my tone grim. People can be so cruel? Greedy? Yes, they can. And they are. Mrs. Harrison cut in, her words sharp with a bitterness that surprised me. But that's not why I asked you here. She paused, gathering her thoughts, and when she continued, her voice was steadier, imbued with a resolve that belied her frail appearance. My husband left everything to me, Sarah. The house, the savings, everything. 
And now, everyone's got their eyes on what they think they're owed. I reached out, placing a comforting hand over hers. But it's your right, Mrs. Harrison. He wanted you to have it. Yes, he did. And I intend to honor his wishes. But, Sarah, there's something else. She hesitated, her gaze locking with mine, a silent plea, for understanding. I need someone I can trust, someone outside this madness. And I, I think that's you. Before I could respond, the sound of the front door slamming echoed through the house, and footsteps approached. Lily appeared in the doorway, her eyes narrowing as they landed on me. What are you doing here? She demanded, her tone as cold as ice. I was just checking on Mrs. Harrison. I replied, my patience wearing thin at her constant hostility. Lily scoffed, dismissing my words with a wave of her hand. Well, you've checked. Now leave. We have family matters to discuss. Mrs. Harrison stood up, her stature small, but her presence commanding. Lily, Sarah is here because I invited her. She's been more of a family to me lately than my own blood. The tension in the room was palpable, a standoff between the grieving widow and the entitled granddaughter-in-law. But before the situation could escalate further, I decided to take the high road. I'll go, Mrs. Harrison. But please, call me if you need anything, anything at all, I said, offering her a reassuring smile. In the six months following the uncomfortable confrontation at Mrs. Harrison's, my life seemed to drift back into a semblance of normalcy, at least on the surface. The once frequent visits to Mrs. Harrison's home ceased almost entirely. Whenever I tried calling her, I was met with the cold, impersonal tone of a disconnected line. Jack and Lily, meanwhile, became distant figures, their lives seemingly moving on, without a backward glance, towards me. Jack even went as far as to tell me not to call him anymore, a request that stung more than I cared to admit. One evening, I saw Mrs. Harrison and Lily near my house. The sight of Mrs. Harrison shocked me, the vibrant, spirited woman I remembered had been replaced by someone much frilier, her face drawn and pale, her body seemingly weighed down by more than just age. Mrs. Harrison, what happened? Are you all right? I asked, my concern mounting at the sight of her. Lily, ever the gatekeeper, was quick to answer. We're making some repairs at the house. It's going to be dusty, and I don't want Grandma breathing all that in. Thought she could stay with you for a bit, she explained, her tone suggesting this was more of an imposition than a request. Despite the surprise, I didn't hesitate. Of course, she can stay here. For as long as she needs, I said, turning to Mrs. Harrison with a reassuring smile. Lily didn't waste any time. Almost immediately, she brought over a few small bags containing Mrs. Harrison's essentials. The repairs should only take a couple of months. I'll give you a call when it's all clear for her to come back she said, her voice carrying a finality that suggested the topic was not open for discussion. The moment Mrs. Harrison crossed the threshold into my home, something shifted. It wasn't just a physical move from one place to another, it was as if she was stepping out of a shadow that had held her captive far too long. When she sat down, the dam broke, and her tears flowed freely, each one a testament to the silent struggles she'd endured. Wrapped in a hug, Mrs. Harrison's voice was muffled, but her words were clear enough to send a chill down my spine. I've been living like a prisoner, Sarah. Couldn't step outside without asking, like I'm some kind of, of hostage in my own home. Night after night, those parties, the noise. And there's no repairs, none. It's all a sham. Lily, she wants me gone. Hearing her speak, my heart sank. Mrs. Harrison, the woman who'd always greeted me with a smile, had been suffering in silence, tormented in what should have been her sanctuary. This is unbelievable, I found myself saying, anger simmering beneath my shock. We should call the cops, Mrs. Harrison. They need to know about this. But she shook her head, a determined glint in her weary eyes. No, dear. I've got a plan. A better one. But I need your help. Can you call my lawyer? Ask him to come here? Her request took me aback, but I nodded. 
Of course, I'll call him first thing. As promised, I reached out to her lawyer, a man Mrs. Harrison had trusted for years. When he arrived, I offered them privacy, stepping away as they delved into discussions I wasn't privy to. Their murmured conversation, though inaudible, was a clear sign of the wheels of justice beginning to turn. Months had passed since Mrs. Harrison moved into my home, and the so-called repairs on her house showed no signs of progress. The silence on Lily's end was deafening, and my patience was wearing thin. Mrs. Harrison, for all her gratitude for my shelter, carried a sadness in her eyes that spoke volumes of the situation's toll on her. One evening, as Mrs. Harrison and I sat in the living room, a rare moment of peace enveloping us, I decided it was time to address the elephant in the room. Mrs. Harrison, something's not right. There's been no word from Lily, and your house, it looks untouched. Are you sure there's really repairs going on? I asked, the concern evident in my voice. She sighed, a deep, weary sound that seemed to carry the weight of her worries. I've had my doubts, dear. But what can I do? I'm just an old lady, and they've made it clear I'm not welcome in my own home. Her words stirred something within me, a fierce determination I hadn't known I possessed. Well, I'm not just going to sit back and watch this happen. It's time we found out what's really going on, I declared, my resolve hardening. The following day, I made my way to Mrs. Harrison's house. The sight that greeted me was exactly as I had feared, the house was silent, no workers in sight, no signs of any ongoing repairs. Just as I was about to leave, Lily and Jack pulled up in their car. The look on Lily's face when she saw me was a mix of surprise and irritation. Sarah, what are you doing here? Spying on us now? Lily snapped, her tone accusatory. I'm not spying. I'm looking for answers. Mrs. Harrison deserves to know what's happening with her house. I shot back, my patience wearing thin. Jack, who had been silent up to this point, finally spoke up. Look, Sarah, this doesn't concern you. Just leave it be. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Doesn't concern me? Mrs. Harrison is living with me because you two claimed her house needed repairs. But I don't see any repairs happening. Lily rolled her eyes, clearly unimpressed. Well, plans change. We've decided to do the repairs later. Grandma can stay with you a bit longer. That's not your decision to make. It's her house, her life. You can't just uproot her because it's convenient for you, I retorted, anger boiling within me. Jack stepped forward, trying to play the mediator. Sarah, let's just calm down and talk about this. We don't want to make a scene. A scene? You're the ones making a scene of her life. I won't stand by and watch you treat Mrs. Harrison like this, I declared, standing my ground. The conversation went back and forth, but my mind was made up. Mrs. Harrison had been through enough, and it was time someone took a stand for her. The next day, my phone rang. The screen flashed Lily's name and a knot formed in my stomach before I even answered. What she asked next sent shockwaves through me. Look, I need a favor. Big one. Confirm grandma's lost it, you know, mentally. Say she needs to be in a home. I'll make it worth your while, ten grand. Lily's voice was all business, cold and calculating. I felt my blood boil. Are you out of your mind? You think I'd sell out Mrs. Harrison like that? For money? I was seething, barely containing my anger. Just think about it, okay? It's easy money, she pressed, clearly not understanding the gravity of her request. Think about it? No, you listen, and you listen good. This is sick, Lily. Don't you ever ask me to do something like this again. Ever. I snapped back, my words laced with disgust. I ended the call, my hands trembling with rage. How could she? How could anyone be so heartless? When I told Mrs. Harrison about the call, I expected anger, maybe shock. But she just nodded, her expression resigned. I'm not surprised, dear. It's been clear to me for a while now, they see me as nothing more than an inconvenience. 
an obstacle to their greed. Her calmness in the face of such betrayal was both heartbreaking and infuriating. They don't deserve you, Mrs. Harrison. Not a bit, I said, my voice thick with emotion. It's all right, Sarah. I've made my peace with it. In fact, I've already taken steps to ensure they can't harm me further, she revealed, a hint of defiance in her tone. What do you mean? I asked, curious despite the heaviness in my heart. I've transferred everything, my house, my savings, all of it, to you. Left just enough for myself to cover a stay in a nice nursing home, one that I picked out. But after what Lily just tried to pull. Maybe I rushed that decision, she explained, her eyes searching mine for understanding. I was floored. Mrs. Harrison, I. Why me? You barely know me. Because you showed me kindness when they showed me greed. You offered me a home when they tried to take mine away. You're my family now, Sarah, in every way that matters, she said, her voice steady and sincere. The weight of her words, of her trust, was overwhelming. You don't have to go to any home, not if you don't want to. Stay here, with me. We'll figure this out together, I offered, more determined than ever to protect her. Mrs. Harrison smiled, a genuine smile that reached her eyes. I'd like that very much, dear. Thank you. The day Mrs. Harrison asked me to gather all her relatives at the lawyer's office, I knew we were on the cusp of a seismic shift. I sent out the invitations, including to my brother, Jack, and his wife, Lily, whose actions had precipitated this whole affair. As we entered the lawyer's office on the day, the air was thick with tension, the kind you could cut with a knife. Mrs. Harrison, frail, but fierce in her determination, held on to my arm, drawing strength from my presence. Once everyone was seated, the lawyer began, but it was Mrs. Harrison, who took control of the room. I brought you all here to announce my decision. She started, her voice, stronger than I'd heard in months. Over the past few years, I've seen true colors shown, care withheld, and greed run rampant in this family. There was an audible shift in the room, discomfort and denial mingling in the charged atmosphere. I have decided to disinherit my daughter, my son, and my grandchildren, she continued, each word deliberate, her gaze unwavering. The only person who has shown me kindness and decency is Sarah. She's my heir. Jack and Lily's faces turned a shade of red I hadn't seen before, their outrage palpable. Murmurs of disbelief and anger bubbled up among the relatives, but Mrs. Harrison wasn't finished. Furthermore, I demand financial compensation from Lily and Jack for the distress they've caused me and for them to vacate my house immediately, she added, the lawyer nodding in agreement beside her. You can't do this to us. Your family. Lily shrieked, her voice shrill with desperation. Family? Mrs. Harrison echoed, a bitter laugh escaping her lips. This is what family does? No. Sarah has shown me more compassion and respect than any of you. The lawyer, sensing the situation spiraling, stepped in. If we cannot proceed civilly, I will not hesitate to call the authorities, he warned, his voice a calm in the storm. Well, we just left. After Mrs. Harrison and I had spent a year and a half as more than just neighbors, but as family, her health took a turn for the worse. It was a tough blow, watching her grow weaker, spending her final days in the hospital. I was there as often as I could manage, holding her hand, talking about everything and nothing, trying to offer comfort in the face of the inevitable. A week after one of those quiet visits, she passed away. I took it upon myself to arrange a proper send-off for her. Despite reaching out through the lawyer to all her relatives, the day of the funeral came and went without a single one of them showing up to pay their respects. On the day of the funeral, my phone rang. It was Lily, the voice on the other end sounding desperate and defeated. I, I don't know how to say this, but we're in a bad spot. Jack lost his job, and we're behind on everything. Can you, can we live in the house? We've got nowhere else. Her request left me in a tight spot, emotions and memories clashing like thunder. Lily, you know that was never my decision to make. Mrs. Harrison made her choices clear, and they were about more than just a roof over your head. 
It was about respect, love, something you all seem to forget. But we're family. She protested weakly, the argument sounding hollow even to her ears. Family? I echoed, the word bitter on my tongue. Family doesn't do what you did. She needed you, and you turned your back. You made your choice, Lily. Now, you have to live with it. Ending the call, I felt a mix of anger and sorrow. It wasn't just about the house or the money, it was about the values Mrs. Harrison stood for, the lessons she taught me about kindness, integrity, and standing up for what's right.